What Can I Talk? Hello, I'm Ian. I worked in driver education for many years. My last YouTube video was dedicated to driving and manoeuvring a caravan on the road. I received several positive comments on this video and was asked to make a video on hitching up my rig. This got me thinking about where to start. It would be easy to film me connecting the caravan to the car, but before I do anything, I must make several checks. First I thought of starting with the tyres. Are the pressures correct? I sometimes have a lot of weight in my car when I'm towing, but not always. A lot of weight requires more pressure in the tow vehicle's back wheels to stop them from overheating and to reduce the risk of blowouts on long journeys. But then I realised that is not the beginning. The beginning starts with are you legal and safe? car insurance, caravan insurance, etc. Then I thought it actually starts before that. Have you got the correct licence to tow? I'm going to give you the facts as quickly as possible with information from trusted sources to verify these facts. You may have to stop the video from time to time to read this information and you will probably have to replace sections of the video to understand all these facts. I will briefly cover the UK law on towing. It's a complicated subject that changes from time to time as politicians like to keep us on our toes. You are looking at part of my licence. I got this information online from gov.uk. I needed my national insurance number, postal address and driving licence number to get it. If you passed your driving test in a car in the UK before the 1st of January 1997, you are like me, entitled to drive a vehicle and a trailer with a combined weight of up to 8,250 kilograms. That is a vehicle fully loaded to its maximum authorised mass and the trailer maximum capacity known as maximum technically permitted laden mass. This information is on the car chassis, in the handbook and on the logbook. The trailer will have a plate on it with MTPLM. Add these together and they mustn't exceed 8,250 kilograms, then you're legal. But be warned, with driving licences there are exclusions such as have you got any medical problems? So always check your license details online. Now for the next section. This man passed his test in a car between the 1st of January 1997 and the 18th of January 2013. So this man has to be careful about the tow vehicle and caravan that he buys. The combined gross vehicle weight of the vehicle added to the caravan's MTPLM cannot exceed 3,500 kilograms. He can tow trailers of up to 750 kilograms with a tow vehicle weighing as much as 3,500 kilograms. So if he owns a Land Rover Discovery 3 litre auto with a gross vehicle weight of 3,310 kilograms, he has basically used up all his allowance. But he can tow a trailer of up to 750 kilograms. The up to 750 kilogram trailer is a category of trailer that doesn't need brakes. So, having the correct combination of tow vehicle and trailer is more important to him. This young lady passed her test after the 19th of January 2013 and her driving licence has changed. Or has it? In researching my facts for this video, 
I had not realised there had been any change to the driving requirements for her, yet there was this new category. So I used several government websites and there had been a change, but only in the wording on the licence. So she has the same entitlement to tow as a previous example. How confusing. Why? This is my theory. I think there had been confusion in the public over the fact that this category of driver can drive a vehicle like a Land Rover Discovery that weighs in at nearly 3.5 tonnes, maximum authorised mass, and yet still to a trailer of up to 750 kilograms. This new wording must have been an attempt to clarify the situation. You can read the DVLA's guide as I did to satisfy yourself on the new wording. But don't take my word for it. Check your entitlement to tow with the gov.uk website. Let's look at this again and make it easier to understand with a different diagram. If you passed your test on or after the 1st of January 1997, you can drive anywhere to vehicle in your category and tow a 750 kilogram trailer. If you want to tow anything heavier, you have to add the weight of the car's gross vehicle weight to the maximum technically permissible laden mass of the trailer and it must not exceed 3,500 kilograms. The diagram you are looking at at present represents this. As your car increases in weight, the caravan or trailer has to decrease in weight. This is important, very important. Your car's actual physical weight can't be lighter than the trailer you tow, and that's a legal requirement. There is a recommendation from the Driving and Vehicle Standards Agency, and they are the experts, believe me. It is, don't tow more than 80 to 85% of the car's weight. Very good advice to give, but how do you know the actual weight of the car and the caravan to follow this advice? The first thing to understand is the weights that matter are the car's curb weight and the caravan's weight when it left the factory. It's MRO. These numbers are fixed, but the actual weight of the caravan and car constantly change as you add things like your clothes etc. up to the caravan's MTPLM limit and the car changes weight as you load and unload it. The advice of caravan organisations is to buy a caravan with a MTPLM of no more than 85% of the vehicle's curb weight. But even then, you have to understand that your car, with the driver in it, often weighs less than the curb weight. So you need to know what's included in the calculation of the car's curb weight. Here's an example. I take my caravan for a service every year. On the trip, my car is empty of the content I load when touring. So I ask myself, how much fuel is in the tank? Is Janet coming with me on this trip? Janet's weight would compensate for a low fuel content in the vehicle to keep within the 85% rule. Can I take anything out of the caravan to reduce its weight? And by thinking like this, I stay within the guidelines. Therefore, an understanding of how the curb weight is calculated is important. The driver's weight is taken into consideration in calculating the curb weight. All liquids, fuel, water, add blue for modern diesels are all in the curb weight. Things go missing from cars, like spare wheels that are in the garage for repair. Other important numbers to know and understand. The tow ball height needs to match the caravan manufacturer's specifications, or there'll be all sorts of handling problems at speed, because the caravan will not be level with the road, and the air flowing over it will affect the tow weight. The caravan manufacturer specifies a height from the road of between... 350 to 420 millimeters. My Land Rover tow ball is within that range. I checked before I bought it. The car's tow ball has a maximum weight limit. It must not exceed the minimum nose weight of the caravan. 
This is usually between 5 and 7% of the weight of the caravan's MTPLM. On my caravan, this is between 75 and 105 kilograms. This needs to be checked before hitching up the caravan to the tow car. And if it's not correct, the load in the caravan or trailer needs to be rearranged. I will give you an example. If somebody made or repaired the trailer with a lower spec hitch, you are in danger towing it. So a look at the hitch to make sure it conforms with the correct nose weight. There is a letter S and a number 100. That is the maximum nose weight in kilograms for this trailer. Don't exceed it. If this is less than the minimum nose weight, you can't tow it. To know the actual nose weight, you need a method of measuring it. I use a gauge like this and measure it before every journey. Caravan manufacturers plate their products to attract buyers who they know are looking at the MTPLM weight and calculating if they can tow it with their car. If you want to sacrifice some of your caravan's payload, it is possible to replate your caravan to a different MTPLM capacity. This is both up or down and this may help you to be within the law on your license. If you go higher or lower, say 100 kilograms, you need to add or subtract about 5 kilograms to the lower nose weight. In my case, a higher nose weight is set by the caravan's hitch capacity as previously explained. Now let's look at what happens if drivers ignore the law, and I'm talking of Newton's laws here. Remember the man with the apple and his laws of motion? Don't try this at home or on the roads. If you have a lighter car than the trailer and you stop on a downhill slope with your foot on the brakes, all the brakes are applied because the tow bar pushes the caravan hitch in, which applies the brakes. If you park and apply the handbrake, you have less brakes applied. Are you happy? I would be concerned if I was you. But let's stop on an uphill slope and see what happens. The tow bar is pulling the caravan's hitch out here. So no brakes are applied on the caravan. And when the handbrake is applied to do a hill start, only the back wheels of the car are holding all the weight of the car and the caravan. Also remember the car's tyres, brakes and suspension tow bar are not intended to hold so much force. So what is going to happen? I will give you a name of a YouTube video. It demonstrates Newton's laws perfectly at the end of this video. Hello. Your support is important to us. Please subscribe to our channel Useful Wisdom by clicking the kite icon here. If you would like to watch more of our videos, we have a playlist and if you would like to click the icon here, you can watch them. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.